you want to talk? I mean, it was a very small scene when they started. It was just mainly the suburbs, and it was like Commandos and a handful of other bands. But uh, you're right that Husker Du did definitely jumpstart their their kind of own thing. Um, in, in a way, it was. It, it, I, I I wasn't there, you know, so I just kind of had to go on 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 the recollections of the people that I talked to, but I imagine, I mean, I live in a city that has a mid-sized music scene. I'm sure Minneapolis is a little bit bigger than Memphis is at the time. Well, I mean, definitely bigger, but still, with a scene of that size, there's going to be a lot of you know intermingling and everything, but there were also a lot of different factions, and I think the replacement and Husker Du issue for the supposed, uh, if you will, um, you know, differences between the band that the press has always really tried to talk up and and blow out of proportion are just, it's ridiculous because of apples and oranges. Those, are, those two bands were going in two completely different directions. Um, if you, you know, if, not on the very surface, yeah. but you, re, you don't have to go back too many layers to see that they were. Mm-hmm. And they didn't, dislike each other, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't this weird, I mean, there may have been some, com- there was some competition, but most of it was good natured, and it, it, there wasn't some rivalry or something, and that has really been blown out of proportion, and I really wanted to kind of, you know, debunk some of that in my book, uh, but no, I know, yeah, I mean, the replacements and the, the could do also signed to a major around the same time, too. Yeah. Uh, replacements actually beat Who's Could Do to it. Um, but, the, you know, the replacements were signed to, uh, because I think, if, if you will, the major wanted to go ahead and grab the band, you know, while they were, you know, it wasn't for an album. It took the replacements another, I don't know, nine months to put a record out after they were signed. When Who's Could Do were signed, the Warners, they were... Warner's basically jumped on a, a moving train mm-hmm. and got what was happening right then. Instead of, you know, how it happens with a lot of bands, they get signed, they're like, okay, you know, we, we're signed and let, now let's start work on that first record. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, you know, there was just way too much already happening and they just got what was somebody was going to get anyway. So mm-hmm. that's how, you know, what was going on with that. Now, what about the tensions within the the band with uh, between Bob Old and Grant Hart too? I mean, by the time they got the, into the it, signed by Warner Brothers, uh, it really kind of started to escalate a little bit more. And uh, what were some, was it just a case of two people going in two different directions as far as uh, uh, the group? Like just that's just something, personally. That's something that uh, well, uh, Bob, I mean uh, Grant and Greg. Uh, agreed to participate in my book, and they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob uh, respectfully declined, uh, and because I, you know, could not have Bob's take on that particular issue, that is kind of why there's not much of that in in, in the book. Well, that's one reason there's not much of it. The other reason there's not much of that in my book is because uh, the past twenty or so years of coverage of the band and the press has focused on that, which I find to be a, a, a gross injustice, if you will, I, I will say diplomatically. Um, and just kind of, that's one reason right there the band hasn't gotten its due for what it did, as, you know, sonically, and for the groundbreaking things that they accomplished, the many, many different things they accomplished, is because of what the interband tensions and the the kind of uh, you know what was happening in the press after after the band broke up was was grabbing all of the spot, all of the spotlight. So um, basically, as far as interband tensions and Grant and Greg's relationship, um, I really hesitate to comment on that uh, to to. Uh, too, too deeply, it is, it is, um, it's just something that, it's something that, you know, that 
shouldn't be worked out through the press, for one thing. And that's kind of how it has been, where they were basically communicating to each other through the press after the band and band's demise. Uh, I kind of didn't want to contribute to that um, at all. Uh, so I, I downplayed all of that. I think it's a very simple situation. I think, that I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the situation only having, you know, one party, uh, uh, you know, giving me information, I'm assuming the situation was a, a classic situation, very simple. Um, and, you know, it's not just bands that, that, that break up because of it, but, you know, people get divorced for the same reason, or, you know, best friends stop, stop hanging out for the same reason. Um, I just think it was two people that, you know, it's just people, or three people, you know, that were very, you know, they were close friends at one point, and you just you just kind of grow apart from people sometimes. And uh, especially if there's this creative engine happening as well, um, you know, there's, there's fertile ground for competition within the band as far as, like, songwriting and everything. And that did happen. Uh, but... I I just you know I think it was as it was just people I don't want to say it was simple it wasn't simple but it was also kind of you know none of my business in a way or the world's business mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really want to want to be the next the next thing the next entity the next printed entity to complicate that issue because. That's something, it is something that should one day be worked out, I believe. Um, you know, so that it, it would make it much easier for them to deal with their back catalog and, and all of that. So, anyway, I'm probably getting into an area I don't need to get into. So, let's, let's, uh, well, just in, in closing, opinion wise, uh, do you think, you know, I mean, a group like a Pixies got together a few years back and did some reunion shows, did a two, few tours sure. here. Now, in your own personal opinion, do you ever see that ever happening, like a one-off? I mean, not to, not a tour or anything, but like maybe a one or two shows to maybe uh, um, commemorate something. Do you think anything like that would get cooking here? Uh, or do you honestly... My personal, in my personal opinion, I'm going to have to say, um, I don't know. My my impulse is to say no, but you know, that kind of thing can come out of nowhere and surprise you. Uh, I, I think there, there's a lot of other things that need to be taken care of first. And um, I think that there's, I think that, you know, the parties involved are moving in that direction. I don't know how fast, really, or how, how slow, but I think that they're moving in that direction. Um, I would much rather see, instead of a reunion thing, because I'm always very skeptical of that stuff, and I was very kind of, disturbed at how much of a kind of crass money grab that Pixies situation was. Um, and the only really re reunion situation that's really impressed me, well, two of them, uh, Mission of Burma and Dinosaur Jr., um, I, uh, I'm just always skeptical of that. And I think it's much more important that the back catalog be... You know, what's reissued needs to be reissued. What's re remastered needs to be remastered. There needs to be a box set. There needs to be, you know, individual reissues of the classic records. Uh, and there just needs to be this this awareness. You know, there's this, pro you know, new, not new product, but reissued product out there and an awareness for it so that that would, I mean, that right there would, that would solve your, you know, overlooked uh, band or, you know, like, over, I think that would solve a lot of that. It would not so much be overlooked, and they would be regarded as the influence they deserve to be regarded as. And you got a great book out. It's called Who's Could Do the Story of the Noise Pop Pioneers Who Launched Modern Rock. Before we send you on your way this evening, is there any final words about about the book? Um. Well. <laughs> I, I know. I just put uh, you, Johnny, on the spot there. No, no, no. I, I. I don't.